On today's show, we are going to talk about the endlessly fascinating subject of capacitors. <laughs> These tiny little miracle devices we use for power supplies and to pass audio signals. Our question today comes from Gerhardt in Calgary, Canada. Hey Paul, in your video about losing bass because of impedance mismatches, you mentioned using high quality capacitors. What difference does the quality of an electronic component make in audio gear? I assume cheaper parts might have less longevity, but if they have the same specs, what is technically different about them and how does it translate into audio quality, in particular capacitors? So let's, let's talk about what is a capacitor. So a capacitor is a device, a component that will not pass battery voltage, but it will pass audio voltage. Okay, so what does that mean? Direct current, direct voltage, if you will, what comes out of a battery, will pretty much only pass through a wire. And a capacitor is not a wire. A capacitor is made up of interleaved pieces of insulators, and conductors. So in early capacitors we had like glass sheets, so you had a, a, a you know a sheet of glass and then a uh, which is an, an insulator, you can't pass electricity through glass, but other insulators are oh, plastic, paper, air, oil, uh, there's any number of, of substances that won't pass electricity and we call these insulators. Then we have conductors, which is metals uh, or th chemicals that will pass electricity. Obviously, copper, aluminum, tin, all those, steel, they will all pass electricity. So if a capacitor is made up of interleaved parts of insulators and conductors, and we have them kind of sandwiched together, and you can't pass a a, a battery voltage through it. You, you put a battery on each end of the capacitor, it, it won't pass any current. But put an audio signal through there and it will get through. And that's because one is AC and it generates an electric field which will jump the barrier across that, conduct, uh, uh, that, that insulator to the conductor and then again you know, pass it on through that. So depending on the frequency, how often the signal, the voltage goes up and down, which is our, our frequency, it'll pass through the capacitor, but if it's too low of a frequency or too close to being battery voltage, then we don't have anything passing through. So these are very valuable. If you want to use it to block, let's say we have a bunch of DC on a circuit and we want to block it, we can pass the audio signal through it as, as you might through a gate, but any DC voltage, let's say at the output of a tube that might have 70, 60 volts sitting on it, it won't pass through. It'll sit over here and won't get through that cap. And that's kind of why we use those <clears throat> in an audio signal. They're also because they are selective on what frequencies they will permit. The smaller the cap, the, the less that lower frequencies will pass through it. We can use them for crossovers, right? So if you have a tweeter and you don't want any bass frequencies, you just take a small capacitor, small in capacitance, and hook it up to there. Because bass frequencies, which are closer to DC, won't get through, then no bass notes get through to the tweeter and it only plays tweeter high frequency sounds. Does that make sense? And if you want lower frequencies, like for a mid-range, you may have more capacitance, and that will then let lower frequencies through. So here's, here's two types of caps. This one, which is this kind of oh, inch, inch in diameter, well, maybe half inch in diameter and, and inch tall canister with two legs sticking out the bottom. That's called an electrolytic, and this is a fairly big capacitor, one we would normally use in a power supply to store energy. This is 4,700 microfarads. Microfarads are the, the way that we, um, it, it's a, 
uh, uh, it was the thousandth of a farad and uh, from Michael Faraday, who had a lot to do a long time ago with, with teaching us how electricity works. And we named the farad after Michael Faraday. And this is a microfarad, which is, uh, I think it's a thousandth of a, of a farad. So this is 4,700 microfarads. And this little guy, which is about a quarter inch in diameter and maybe, oh, I don't know, half inch tube, uh, half inch long tube with a conductor coming out of both ends, just a wire, is called a film capacitor. So this one is made from very simply from a insulator, in this case polypropylene, which is a plastic, and on top of that is layered a very thin sand, uh, a layer of, of copper foil, and you take the, the plastic film layer on top of it, the foil, and you just roll it up as you might a cigarette and then attach a wire on, at the beginning and the end of that roll and you have a film capacitor. These are excellent for passing audio signals. And this electrolytic, while it has a lot of capacitance, isn't as good sounding for audio purposes. And that's to the heart of your question on here. But look at the difference between the two. This is 4,700 microfarads, the, this large, or this, this, you know, oh, it's about the size of my thumb. And this guy, which is very small, is considerably smaller in capacitance. It's 0.015 microfarads. Because even if I could make this, and, I, and we have film capacitors the size of this electrolytic, they're very much smaller in terms of capacitance. So an electrolytics advantage, which uses a chemical inside uh, for the, uh, for the called an electrolyte uh, to, to, to manufacture it, as opposed to hard materials, the film and foil and this, um, you can get huge amounts of capacitance at very low price. This is probably 20 cents for this electrolytic and we get 4,700 microfarads. This, uh, this, this particular one's probably a dollar, and it's 0.015. So very big difference in size and in cost and in purpose. The electrolytic we use in power supplies, the film cap, because it sounds so much better, we use in the signal path. And the last part I'll tell you is in a budget-sensitive product where we don't have... Oh, I mean, some of, the, some of the caps, some of the film caps we use, like in the BHK amplifier, they cost us upwards of $20 a piece. And the same capacitance in an electrolytic, probably 15, 20 cents. So we can do a little nifty trick. We can take a low ESR, equivalent series resistance, which is an excellent choice for an electrolytic if you're going to use an electrolytic in your signal path because of cost we can we can put one of those in and it'll sound pretty decent but then if we take one of these one of these film caps and we put it in parallel so let's say a 10 microfarad electrolytic with a tenth of a of a microfarad film cap sandwiched together in parallel you get a pretty decent sounding pass through for audio signals and that's kind of one of the little tricks that we do when we voice a product. And that just takes years of knowledge to figure all that stuff out. All right. So enough about caps. Away with you. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.